The movie begins with an 11-year-old girl named Emma, waking up from her bed and waking up the other children who sleep in the same hall. The children live in a large orphanage called Grace Fieldhouse. They are cared for by a woman named Isabella, whom the children call mother. Although they are not related by blood, they live like a big family and receive a lot of love and affection from their caretaker. The orphanage is surrounded by a vast meadow where the children run and play together. However, they are not allowed to go out of the fence that surrounds the meadow. Their day starts when Emma wakes everyone up, then they sit together to enjoy breakfast with various healthy foods. Education and happiness are the main priorities at the orphanage. Emma and her two best friends, Norman and Ray, always excel in various subjects and always get the highest scores. They have identification number tattoos on their necks and have no knowledge of the outside world. The children arrived at the orphanage as babies, but they do not stay there forever and will be adopted by foster parents and taken away to the outside world. One day, a little girl named Connie gets adopted and will soon leave the orphanage. After saying goodbye to her friends, Isabella takes Connie to the gate of the orphanage to meet her new parents. Meanwhile, Emma finds Connie's favorite doll left on the table, and Ray suggests that Emma and Norman deliver it to Connie at the gate of the orphanage. When they arrive at the gate, they see that Isabella and Connie have already left. They take the opportunity to step out where they find a van and no one around. When they peek into the van, they are shocked and scared to see Connie lying limp with a stem of plant stuck in her chest. Before they can react, they hear heavy footsteps approaching them. Emma and Norman hide under the van and are horrified to see some strange monsters talking about how delicious human flesh is. One of them says that the meat from this farm is elite meat and only for rich demons. Hearing this, Emma and Norman realize that their orphanage is nothing but a farm, where they are raised like livestock only to become food for demons. Then Isabella talks about some children with the highest scores, and they are the most delicious meat and most in demand. This means that according to these demons, the level of deliciousness of human meat is classified based on their intelligence. Suddenly, one of the demons smelled Norman and Emma's body odor. Luckily, they managed to escape without being seen, but they left Connie's doll there. In their escape, they returned to the orphanage. Emma fell and cried, refusing to believe that what they saw was Connie and that their mother could be so cruel. Norman tried to calm her down and said that they could escape from the orphanage, but Emma worried about the other children because she already considered them as her family. The next day, Norman made an escape plan and asked Emma not to tell anyone else before the plan was finished. That day, they decided to cross the fence to see the situation there. After walking through the forest, they stopped at a high wall. Then they decided to go back because they couldn't take it. When they arrived at the orphanage area, the other children reported that they couldn't find one of their friends, a little girl named Nyla. Isabella looked at her watch, then walked into the forest and quickly found Nyla. Seeing this, Emma and Norman realized that the watch was a navigator and that there was a tracking device installed in their ears. The next day, Norman and Emma went to the forest with a rope and hid it there as preparation for their plan to jump over the wall. Suddenly, Ray appeared and felt suspicious of their behavior. Norman then told him everything they heard and saw that night and revealed the truth about their orphanage to Ray. And surprisingly, Ray immediately believed them. In the library, they resumed their plan. A four-year-old boy named Phil found Morse code hidden in some books from someone named Minerva. This gave them hope about what was waiting for them out there. The next day, Isabella introduced the children to their new caretaker, who was named Crone. Crone's arrival made their escape plan even more difficult. While chatting with Crone, Isabella revealed that she found Connie's doll at the gate and knew that Emma, Norman, and Ray already knew the truth about the orphanage, but she was sure that they wouldn't run away. Meanwhile, Emma, Norman, and Ray held a secret meeting. Norman believed that someone among the children was Isabella's spy, and if this was true, they assumed it must be an older child. Finally, they decided to tell two other older children, Don and Gilda, about the reality of the orphanage. Although they didn't believe it at first, they eventually agreed to help them. When with Emma and Ray, Norman said that he told Don and Gilda each one of two different locations where he hid the rope that they would use to climb the wall. The missing rope would reveal the identity of the spy. The next day, one of the ropes was gone. 
Emma and Ray were happy because they finally managed to uncover the identity of the spy. But Norman revealed that he set up that trap for three people. Ray, Don, and Gilda. He had told the third location to find out if he was the spy, and Ray fell into the trap. Ray finally admitted that he had found out the truth about their orphanage a long time ago, but knew that he couldn't escape without a way out. He finally offered himself to Isabella to be her spy, and in return Isabella would postpone handing him over to the demons. The other action of only reporting one hiding location of their rope made Norman believe that Ray was not loyal to Isabella and planned to use another rope to escape from there. Ray revealed that he had long planned to escape. He was also the one who stole Connie's toy so that Emma and Norman could find out the truth about the place and try to escape as well. Finally, Norman asked Ray to be a double spy and remain their friend. That night, Ray met Isabella and gave a false report about Norman trying to poison Isabella's food. Isabella thanked him and then said that it was Ray's turn soon. The next day, the five children planned to climb the wall, but Crone heard their conversation. Instead of reporting to Isabella, she joined them and asked them to visit her room later that night. It turned out that Crone was also a student like them. She wanted to get rid of Isabella and become the new caretaker at the orphanage, and for that she was ready to help them. That night they visited Crone's room where Crone told them everything she knew about the outside world. More than 1,000 years ago, humans and demons fought each other. After a long and exhausting battle, an agreement was made whereby humans and demons would live separately in their own worlds. When the agreement was made, some humans were left behind in the demon world, and that's how human farms began. By eating intelligent humans, the demons would take their attributes, which prevented them from turning into mindless monsters. A few days later, Isabella handed a letter to Crone, ordering her to become a caretaker at another farm. But Crone's obsession with getting rid of Isabella hadn't gone away. Before leaving, she left a mysterious pen in Norman's drawer to help them. When Crone arrived at the gate, she was greeted by Grandma, the supervisor, who then handed her over to the demons because she tried to help the children escape. The children then started with their plan. Emma and Norman went to the wall while Ray distracted Isabella and Phil watched from the yard. But their plan had been discovered by Isabella. She locked Ray in a room, then quickly followed Emma and Norman. Isabella found them near the wall and said that she had given them a warm and comfortable home so they shouldn't refuse the inevitable. Emma tried to hold Isabella, and Norman took the rope to climb the wall, but Isabella broke Emma's leg, making Norman stop. Isabella then said that tomorrow would be Norman's last day at the orphanage. That night, they gathered again. They worried about Norman's fate and then asked him to escape. When everyone was asleep, Norman found a strange pen left by Crone in his drawer. The next day, Norman climbed the wall to escape. When he found a huge cliff on the other side of the wall, he returned to the orphanage and accepted his fate. They hugged for the last time with teary eyes. Emma cried bitterly when Isabella finally took Norman away from the orphanage. At the gate, Norman was picked up by a man who he thought was Minerva, the person who had left hidden messages in the books in the library. But the man dismissed him and said that he was the person in charge of ensuring that the agreement between humans and demons remained in place. Soon after, the demons arrived in front of Norman and were ready to devour him. A few weeks later, Emma, who looked depressed, gradually recovered from her injury. She and Ray had lost all hope and gave up their plan to escape. Isabella, who kept watching them, was happy because they were under control. Two months had passed. Finally, it was Ray's turn to be handed over to the demons. The night before his delivery day, Emma came to visit him and told him that they still had a chance. But Ray, who had given up hope, decided to burn himself along with the orphanage. As the fire began to spread, Emma screamed for Isabella. Isabella told the children to get out of the house quickly and then tried to put out the fire. After a while, she realized that none of her children were around. It turned out that this was their plan all along. In the last two months, Emma couldn't do anything suspicious because she was constantly watched by Isabella. So she used it to divert Isabella's attention while Don and Gilda prepared everything for their plan. Emma also found a letter on Norman's bed that had an escape plan written in it. Norman had also anticipated Ray's plan to burn himself and used it in his plan. Emma couldn't tell Ray earlier because Isabella watched them closely. They had left the little children under four years old 
because it could endanger their lives, and Emma had promised to come back again when they got more help. Finally, they reached the wall and hurried to climb it. Isabella chased them with the help of a navigator, but soon realized that the navigator didn't work because the children had removed the tracking devices from their ears. After everyone was on top of the wall, they tied a rope across the cliff and used it to cross to the other end. Emma was the last one to cross, but before she left, Isabella came and threatened to cut her rope. Taking a risk and crossing with the rope, Isabella had a chance to cut it, but she didn't. She looked at the children she raised from the other side and smiled at them for the last time. The children then walked through the forest and stopped when Emma showed them the pen that Crone had left for them. When opened, the pen projected an image in the air. A projection of an owl appeared and showed them the direction to the city where they would be safe. At the end of the movie, Isabella stood in front of the grandmother supervisor who was disappointed that Isabella let the valuable children escape. Isabella was finally handed over to the demons as a punishment for her and the movie ends. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Because by subscribing you have supported me to make better videos. See you in the next video. Two.